folks, Scott here with a new ScorePal project video for you today. I was talking with Diana Crick the other day, and it appears that lots of our normal plans for the holidays have become a little unnormal in this oh so unnormal year of 2020. So I know I'm not doing the same things that I would normally do. And so we thought that some nice hostess gifts might be a good thing to look at this month of November since the holidays are coming up. So if you're invited to a nice Thanksgiving dinner with people you haven't Thanksgiving with before, there's nothing quite like a nice hostess gift to thank them for inviting you. These are very useful. Everybody can use some tea lights in their collection. These hold six little tea lights. Oh, mm, love the scented ones. And who doesn't like candles? Very simple, very straightforward, very inexpensive. I'm not spending a lot of money, but I'm giving you something that's very nice and useful. And I think it says, thank you in a loving and charming way. That holds six little tea lights. Both of these hold six little tea lights. This one is a slider box that actually holds votive candles. Oh, these are coconut. <laughs> really nice. Who doesn't need tea lights or votive candles? And I really like the little matchbook design here. And then we'll do a specialty box also at the end of this. But let's get in first with our great little six votive candle box. Now these are just basically a double thickness wall box for the bottom with a top that wraps around it and flaps over the top. So I did make a template for us this month. We've got the tea light and votive candle gift box template so no formulas nothing you have to worry about with this one i did all the hard work <laughs> for our hostess gift box six tea lights that's the small one that holds six tea lights we're making a double thickness walls box now we've already done double thickness walls this is the template that we did in our September video, so we're not going to spend a lot of time making our box, but we do have our boxes three and an eighth by four and five eighths by three quarter inches tall. So we're gonna cut our cardstock to six and an eighth inches by seven and five eighths inches. So I, of course, already have a piece of cardstock cut. This, you can see, is seven and five eighths inches wide by six and one eighth inch tall. It's scored on all four sides at three quarter of an inch and an inch and a half. So our box will be three quarters of an inch tall. How we put that together is available on this template. So we're gonna just jump right to the box is done. <laughs> that holds six tea candles. This is three and one eighth inch by four and five eighths inch by three quarter inches tall. Now we have to make the lid, and this is the folding lid. And we've got cut our cardstock to four and five eighths by eight and a half. That's what we have here, eight and a half, four and five eighths. Now this is where it gets tricky. I really wanted our wraparound lids to be as tight as possible without any gaps along the edges or top. So the scoring's gonna be a little bit weird but if you follow along, I think you'll get it. So we're going to score along the eight and a half inch side at three quarters of an inch. Three quarters of an inch. And then it says shift the left end of the cardstock one sixteenth inch to the right between the edge of your score pal and one eighth inch. So we're sliding this one sixteenth inch to the right, which puts the edge of our cardstock right between the edge of the board and our first eighth inch mark. So that's just scooting it to the right one sixteenth of an inch. And then we'll do our other score lines, which is four inches, four and three quarters, and seven and seven eighths. We're still a sixteenth of an inch away from the edge over here. So four inches, four and three quarters, and then seven and seven eighths, which is one eighth shy 
of 8 inches. That's our scores. We'll go ahead and commit these creases. I think I'll actually round the ends of my fold over flap as well. That keeps it from being all pokey. So this flap is what's going to attach first. But let's round the corners on this. Scorpel has this new Karumaru Pro corner rounder. I really like it. It has like really, really small sizes. This smallest corner rounder on this is like one millimeter. So cute. I just love that little itty bitty round there. Finish off the edges of that very nicely. So let's pull our score tape over and we're going to put one right at the top of our first flap here that's going to attach to our double wall thickness box that we've already made. I find this much easier to do this one piece at a time instead of trying to put glue on everything and fit it onto the box. So I'm just going to set my box here, make sure the sides line up, make sure it's right up against that fold, and then press that right onto the front of my little box. Very nice, nice and tight. <laughs> so since I didn't put a second piece of score tape there, I'm gonna put a piece of score tape right along this edge and of course the other side. And we'll put a couple of little pieces on the edges here too. Make it all look nice and professional-like. Give that a quick burnish down with your score tool. I'm going to remove this liner paper first. <laughs> and I'm gonna fold these out. And I think I'll fold this one up as well. Just want to make sure your edges line up correctly. That feels right. Pull out your little flags. That's down. That looks perfect there. Pull out that tab. That's all down. One more piece of score tape and we will have this box completed. I think everybody has a bag of tea lights somewhere in their house. <laughs> I know I do. They do come in bulk at Ikea and Home Depot and lots of places like that. That's my last piece of score tape on the back side. Give that a good press down into that. There we have a lovely tea light holder. It will hold, of course. Six tea lights. I like the scented ones. Some people don't like scented candles. That's the small one. Let's go to the big one. So the votive candle holder is basically the same size as the tea light holder. It's just twice as tall. So it's three and an eighth by four and five eighths by one and a half inches tall. Instead of three quarter inches, it's one and a half inches tall, but it's still basically the same size box. So I've done all the math for you. We cut our cardstock to nine and an eighth by 10 and five eighths. This is nine and one eighth by 10 and five eighths, and then scored on all four sides at one and a half and three, one and a half and three, the corners are trimmed away. Score tape is added. Again, just follow the instructions on the double thickness wall template. And we've got our box. This will hold those votive candles quite nicely. So let's make our sliding matchbox lid. So since this is in a sliding matchbox, let's put a little notch in this. We've got, that's three and one eighth. So right in the middle of that is right there. I'll take my one inch circle punch, slide that in there. I don't think I have to go all the way as far as halfway, but we'll punch that right there. And that's our thumb notch in the bottom of our box. Again, I fiddled with this for a long time. It was hard to get just the right dimension for a cover that wrapped around this that held it snugly, but not too tight and not so loose that the inner box just slid right out. So this is how I came up with it. Again, we're gonna be doing some shifting around on our score pal. 
for the sliding matchbox lid, we're going to cut our cardstock to four and five eighths by ten and three quarters. So I've got four and five eighths by ten and three quarters, and we're going to score along the ten and three quarter inch side at one and three eighths inches. So that's one quarter plus one eighth. So three eighths, one and three eighths. I have to be a little careful with this glitter paper so I don't rip right through it. <laughs> then we're going to shift again. Shift the left end of the cardstock a sixteenth inch to the right between the edges of the score pound one eighth inch. And then we're going to score at four and five eighths inch and six and one eighth inch. So we're going to shift over a sixteenth of an inch right between the edge of the board and that first eighth inch mark four and five eighths so that's four eighths is a half five eighths is one past four and a half so that's four and five eighths and six and one eighth so just right of the six six and one eighth then we shift the left end of the cardstock back into the left corner of your score pal and score at nine and two fifths, that's not right. And score at nine and a quarter. I have to correct that before I publish this. <laughs> nine and a quarter. That's what it says here, nine and a quarter. So we shift it back into the corner, score at nine and one quarter. <laughs> Let's fold this glitter paper carefully. Commit those creases. Okay, you've got one smaller flap which is going to go on the inside, one larger flap that's going to go on the outside. But the secret to this fitting well is to not go ahead and glue it while it's outside of the box. Get your box over here. You want to assemble this together while it's on the box or it's going to be too tight. <laughs> so this is the inside. I'll put some score tape along this edge. Give that a good burnish into that glitter. And then this is going on the outside. So I'll put one at the top on the inside here. Add a quick burnish. Give this a wrap around my box just to check one more time. I think I like the seam going down to the bottom there. That looks good. We'll remove our liner paper from the inside piece. Wrap our box. Make sure your edges on the cover match. Go ahead and press that down. That feels good. We can now peek in here and with our little poker pull out our other liner paper and press that down. Now chances are this is not going to fold perfectly flat which you would think a box would, but it's just a little bit cattywampus. I think that's giving us the extra room we need to actually make our little matchbook closure. I love this little box especially. And now not only does this hold six votive candles perfectly, you can also put six electric tea lights in this also. Now generally an electric tea light is not going to be as big around as a regular tea light, but this fits them perfectly with their flames and everything. So I thought it would be great to wrap these in a little tissue paper to put inside of our box here. That'll take up some of the room and keep them from rattling around. So just a, this is a three inch square of tissue paper. Pull it up on the sides, drop her in there. Three inches, wrap that around my little electric tea light. Pop that one in. If you have this one, it still has the little plastic tab to keep it from being turned on. So this one's still brand new. You can just bend that over, rub your fingernail over that and bend that tab over. It'll fold right down for you. Get out of the way, let your tea light sit fairly flat. That's four and six. <laughs> there you go. That holds them in there quite nicely. They wiggle around only a little bit. 
that slips right into that cover. That cover is nice and tight all the way around there. It's not going to slide out on its own. You can decorate these up however you like. Just a simple ribbon and bow. This is pattern paper, pattern paper, glitter cardstock. I think these make really great hostess gifts for this time of year. Let's move on and get to our specialty box. Now, Diana thought it would be fun for us to do a specialty box. This is one of her favorite boxes of all time. This is called an origami box, which is about a three inch square box that has two sides that fold open to expose an inner box. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> a little origami box. Now there are actually printed instructions for this origami gift box. I will provide a link to this download both in the description down below and on my website at cardcutups.com. Let's make ourselves our little origami gift box here. Now this says we need 11 and 7 eighths by 8 and 3 quarter inch cardstock. That's what we have right here. This is 11 and 7 eighths, just 1 eighth inch shorter than 12 by 8 and 3 quarters of an inch. This is going to be our outside. This is going to be our inside. This is a piece of Tim Holtz uh, paper stash cardstock. I really like this very much. We're going to do all our scoring on the front side of our paper here. Now our instructions say, with the eight and three quarter inch side across the top, place the left side of the cardstock on the one eighth inch line of the score pal and score at three inches and six inches. So instead of tucking this up into the corner, we're gonna scoot this over to the one eighth inch mark. So with this at one eighth of an inch on the left and butt it up against the top, we'll score this at three inches and at six inches. Then our instructions say, with the 11 and 7 8 side across the top, Place the cardstock completely into the upper left corner of your score pal. Score at one and a half and four and a half from top to bottom. One and a half and four and a half from top to bottom. Then it says score at two and a half inches only from the top edge to the first score line, skip the middle section, and score from the second score line to the bottom edge. So at two and a half inches, we're going to score this first section and then this section from these two score lines that we already scored. So that is at two and a half inches. We're going to score down to the three inch mark, which is we scored on the shorter side down to three. Then we'll flip that around to do the other side, two and a half inches. So that's 11, 10, that's two and a half inches. And we'll go just to that other score line. That's two and a half inches to that other score line. So there you can see we have those two and a half inch score lines that just go to those center scores, not completely across. Then it says, turn the cardstock around and repeat on the other side. One and a half and four and a half from top to bottom. One and a half and four and a half from top to bottom. Then we'll score at two and a half from the top to the first score line. Two and a half to that first score line. Then we'll rotate that, do that same two and a half, eleven, ten and a half, two and a half to the other score line. Now that should be all of our scores that we need for this. On all four corners, cut the two and a half inch vertical score line from the top edge down to the horizontal score line. On that 
same horizontal score line cut from the one and a half inch vertical score line over to the four and a half inch vertical score line, it will form a T. So we're going at that two and a half mark. We're cutting this right to that first score line, going down right down the center of that channel. And then we're going to cut, finish that cut to the first score line, which is right there, and do the other side the exact same way, but all the way over to the next score line. So on all four corners, you're going to cut this T, and then the same on our last corner, center score line there to the cross score then follow those to the next score line. I think this is the only really odd part of this other than our first score lines that were not taken in the corner. So there's our four T cuts. Turn the cardstock over and fold up towards you on all the score lines. Okay, turn it over, fold it up towards you on all the score lines. Let's commit the crease, commit the crease, and then our side folds. There's not one there, there's one right here, and those two flaps as well. There is this score line right here. Commit that crease. And then that first score line again on the other side, commit that crease, and then that center crease as well with all three sections. Commit that. That's all of our score lines reinforced. Bring the middle sections in together, overlapping the sides. Adhere them in place to form the base of the box. Those two center sections come over to form the base of our box. That's our inner part of our box. So let's put score tape on the inside of this flap on the edge. And then that's going to match up with that. So we'll put score tape on the edge of this side. Do the same thing on the other side. So this side gets score tape on this end, and this side gets score tape on the inside. So then when we remove our liner paper, those edges will attach together. Everything has been cut pretty square, so we should be able to just line those up and press them together. That's one half. We'll do the other side as well. Remove the liner paper. Remove the other piece of liner paper on our score tape. And then square those up and press them together. That's the inner part of our clamshell origami box. These will fold in and make our two sides. Now the instructions say to using scissors, miter the corners of the four one inch wide sections. Bring those sections in and adhere to the inside of each lid section. So these are our four one inch pieces that they want us to miter the edges. So we'll take our little darts right there and right there. All four flaps get their edges mitered. And we'll do the other two on the other side. And that gives us our four little mitered tabs. Now we're going to bring those in and attach them right there. Attach this one right here and the same on the other side. So our score tape is going to go on the outside of these flaps. I'll stay with my quarter inch score tape here and we'll go on the top and right close to that score line. Do that on two sides here. 
fairly close to that score line. And then on the edge, that should be plenty of score tape to hold that nice and firmly. Let's go ahead and add our score tape to the other two tabs on the top and right above our score line. And then our last little tab close to that score line and at the top edge. I don't think any of these flaps are going to end up going anywhere with all that score tape on them. Let's burnish that score tape down and put the rest of this box together. Remove this liner paper. We'll do one side at a time here. Those will fold up and in. Make sure our edges match. And press that down. Make sure our other edge matches along the edge here. Press that down. You can give them a little burnish with your score tool. And we'll do the same on the other side. Remove the liner paper and then fold these sides in and attach them to their sides. Just match up the edges, both sides. Give those a press, a little burnish with your score tool. And here we have our little clamshell origami box. <laughs> Isn't that clever? <laughs> now this does suggest embellish as desired. Here are some suggestions. A belly band, a ribbon pattern, or stamped cardstock. My favorite is a belly band. I made this belly band. Now this is a three inch square box. Three inches by three inches by three inches. So if you cut a belly band for this, you're gonna need 12 inches minimum. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. A lot of those Tim Holtz card stacks have strips, one inch strips that are available. These are one inch strips from that same cardstock pack. So. You don't want to score these at every three inches because then that would put your seam at the corner of the box. Your seam would be at the corner. I want my seam to be in the center. So we're going to score this at one and a half, then add three, that would be four and a half, add three, would be seven and a half. Add three would be ten and a half, which ultimately leaves us one and a half on the end. Then when you fold this, you've got a nice belly band that you can attach together with an extra piece of cardstock there that the seam is in the center. So just remember if you're using a belly band on that. My favorite thing to do with a belly band, you would think you would put a belly band around it this way, but I really like putting that belly band along the seam of our little clamshell, which then ultimately camouflages that seam completely. And so it's a bit of a surprise when you take the belly band off and see that your box opens up like that. This is a great box. I really like this as well. I haven't tried adjusting this for different sizes. This works perfectly for a 12 inch piece of cardstock or patterned paper. A really fun box. This is a very masculine box. I love this little star thing I folded and put on top. So though it's not really origami, I really do like this origami gift box. A simple ribbon will dress up a pattern paper box delightfully. I love camouflaging the little seam in the middle. A belly band will work just as well with decoration on top. I was wondering if there was something that would fit in here that would make a nice hostess gift. And you know what? I found... <laughs> Jacks, this little tub of jacks. Yes, I said jacks. 
classic jacks, traditional metal jacks, a set of 12 with two rubber balls. Fits in this box perfectly. I tell you, you haven't had a good party with close friends until you all sat down on the floor and played a round of jacks. <laughs> Fits perfectly in this lovely little origami gift box. So that's our Hostess gift box video for you this month. It's November. We're getting close to the holidays here. If you're invited to anywhere unusual this holiday season, take your host a nice gift. Of course, my template with all of the measurements and our lid diagrams for both of these candle boxes will be available on my website at cardcutups.com. I'll also have a download there for our origami gift box instructions as well if you'd like to make that. I really had fun with these boxes this month. Everything from very masculine to very holiday and very pink. <laughs> How's that pink for you? I love that with the little electric tea lights for your favorite recovering pyromaniac. <laughs> Thanks so much for sharing your time with me here. I hope you like these boxes. I hope you can use them this holiday season. Please give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. It lets YouTube know that it should share this post with other like-minded crafters. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I wish you all the happiest and the healthiest of holiday seasons. I'm busy working away on my Christmas cards and am trying to see if there's anything salvageable for this holiday season this year. <laughs> Thank you so much. It really means a lot to me. Please take care of yourselves out there. Wear your masks. Take care of your loved ones. Wash your hands. Let's keep ourselves safe this winter season. I already got my flu shot. <laughs> I send you and yours happy and healthy blessings. And please remember to like me, list me, pin me, post me, share me with all of your friends. Don't Run with scissors, and as always, happy crafting! For more detailed information, better pictures, and downloadable files, please visit my website at cardcutups.com.